After eight years of this Prime Minister, it's never been more expensive to grow or buy food. A Saskatchewan farmer told me yesterday that his carbon tax bill just to dry his grain was $2,000 in one month. The Liberal tariff on fertilizer cost Eastern Canadian farmers more than $34 million. Wow. Under this Prime Minister's watch, we've lost hundreds of farms to bankruptcy and food prices are up 12%. Will the Prime Minister help Canadians put food on the table and axe his farm-killing carbon tax? The Honourable Minister of the Environment. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I would like to remind this House that the fact are that 70 per cent of the prices we're seeing at the pump are related to crude oil prices going up, largely because of Russia's brutal evasion of Ukraine. I'm getting there. I'm getting there. And another 25 per cent is a result of provincial taxes and refining margins. We recycle 100 per cent of the revenues to Canadians, 10 per cent specifically to small businesses and agricultural industries in Canada, Mr. Speaker. Thank you very much. You got it. The Honourable Member for Foothills. Well, I guess that the Minister didn't understand I was asking a question about agriculture, <laughs> not about uh, oil prices. But what they have to understand is their carbon tax has very real consequences. What it is doing is suffering, suffocating Canadian farm families and giving Canadian families sticker shock when they go to the grocery right. store. And it's only going to get worse. Right. When the Liberal NDP Carbon Tax Coalition triples their carbon tax, a farmer will be paying $150,000 a year in carbon tax. There are consequences. The consequences are produce is up 13 per cent, bread is up 16 per cent, and pasta is up more than 20 per cent. Will the Prime Minister take responsibility for this food crisis and axe this farm killing carbon tax? Thank you, Mr. Speaker. As usual, the Conservatives are twisting the information. Sure. Is misquoting sure. our research and talking about a typical farm of or 6,000 acres, which is not very fair. See, Mr. Speaker, he doesn't want to hear about everything we do for farmers. We are investing $1.5 billion in agro-environmental farming. Yesterday, we announced $150 million to support the supercluster on protein. We're working with farmers for farmers, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Member for Lambton, Kent, Middlesex. Well, Mr. Speaker, that Liberal Minister is completely out of touch with reality. The reality is, after eight years of this Prime Minister, Canadians are struggling to eat and our food sovereignty is in jeopardy. The Liberal plan to triple, triple, triple the carbon tax is going to price our farm families right out of business. And the carbon tax to fertilizer reductions, this is actually going to make it more difficult for Canadian farmers. And this government's making it more difficult. Well, newsflash, no farms, no foods. So, Mr. Speaker, will the Prime Minister take responsibility for empty cupboards and empty stomachs and give Canadian farm families a break and axe the carbon tax? Yeah. Yeah. The Honourable Minister of Natural Resources. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Once again, my Conservative colleagues missed the point that over 8 out of 10 Canadian families actually get more money back than they pay in the context of the carbon tax. I'm, I'm sorry, but I mean... It started off with a little bit of rumbling, but now they're shouting at the top of their lungs, and that's really not acceptable in the House. I mean, we can tolerate a little bit, but once it starts becoming shouting, then it becomes almost bullying, where it's almost like you're in a schoolyard trying to bully someone into stopping. So I'm going to ask everyone to take it down a notch, and we'll let the Honourable uh, Minister continue, please. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. As I was saying, the Conservatives conveniently ignore that 8 out of 10 Canadian families actually get more money back than they pay with respect to the price on pollution. I would say in the modern age, it is not a responsible position for a political party in this country to take to simply ignore the reality of climate change, what the Conservatives do conveniently every day in this House. You need to actually, if you're going to have a, have a relevant economic plan for this country, you need to have a plan to fight climate change. That's exactly what we are doing. The Honourable Member for Lambton, Kent, Middlestead. Well, the Liberals are the kings of misinformation. Farmers don't get a rebate. Yes. And this government hasn't even hit a single climate target. Yes. And after eight years of this Prime Minister, the carbon tax is making food too expensive for Canadians. Fertilizer restrictions are making it harder for farmers to grow food. Big grocery chains are nickel and diming our produce farmers with high fees while they're raking in record high profits in this government? Well, they've done nothing. So, Mr. Speaker, will the Prime Minister take responsibility for his mounting failures and give Canadian farm families a break and axe the carbon tax? Yeah. The Honourable Minister of Agriculture. 
Mr. Speaker, today is Canadian Agriculture Day, and I'm very proud of everything we've done for our agricultural producers. We have funded the sector significantly to help them with green technology, nearly half a billion dollars just for those green technologies. Yesterday, we announced an additional $150 million for the protein supercluster. We are also increasing our investment in risk management because we know that our producers are facing extreme weather events. And we also increased the budget of the Canadian Agricultural Partnership, which the Conservatives never did. Thank you. The Honourable Member for Beauce, Mr. Speaker, after eight years of this Prime Minister, Canadians can no longer feed themselves, and this government's policies are directly responsible for that. Canadian farmers are being crushed by the car carbon tax. He also put a 35% tariff on fertilizer, which makes us the only country in the G7 to do so, which is causing food prices to go up even more. When will he finally remove these taxes so that farmers can feed our families? The Honourable Minister of Agriculture. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'd like to remind my colleague from Quebec that the price on pollution is not administered in the same way in Quebec. It's administered by Quebec. And I would also like to take the moment to remind all of our agricultural producers that we've also improved the advanced payment program, which enables them to have a short-term loan of up to a million dollars, with part of that being interest-free. And so I would invite our producers to take advantage of that. The Honourable Member for Beauce. Mr. Speaker, my colleague across the way seems to be living on another planet because the carbon tax clearly affects Quebec because we are not self-sufficient. For example, propane and natural gas to dry grain or heat buildings and other things that we import from other provinces and territories. So I refuse to take any lessons from my colleague. On April 1st, things will just get worse as the go government is planning to triple the carbon tax. We, the Conservatives, will continue to stand up for Canadian farmers. When will the Liberals show that same courage? The Honourable Minister of the Environment. Mr. Speaker, what my colleague just stated is simply not true. Federal carbon pricing does not apply to Quebec because Quebec has its own cap-and-trade system which has been in place since before the federal government's carbon pricing policy. And I would also like to remind my colleague and everyone in his party that climate change will affect farmers from the entirety of the country just as much as they affect Canadians.